Hello, my name is Karen Evans and I write for Family Tree magazine, focusing on using DNA to research our ancestors. Today, I'm going to share with you a small part of my journey into online asylum records. As part of my DNA research, I need to marry off all of the available family members of each of my ancestors. And here you can see Samuel Fletcher, who's aged 41, who is the brother of my three times great grandmother, Mary Fletcher. The idea is that I'm trying to find people who are going to be descended from these ancestors or siblings of ancestors to find matches on my DNA. Here in 1881, you see Samuel living with his wife, Mary Ann, and their seven children, Abraham, Eliza, Esther, Samuel, William, James and Mary Ann. My plan is to find each of the children and find out what happened to them. It quickly became apparent there was something interesting about Abraham. By 1891, Abraham is no longer living in the family home and I find him in a pauper lunatic asylum in Powick, Worcestershire. I know it's my Abraham from the details that are given such as his age, his place of birth, and the fact that he's an iron worker. But what's happened to Abraham? What we're able to find out? I quickly contacted the Worcestershire Records Office to find out what I could do. Sure enough, they have the documentations, but they also told me about a wonderful online site that could be of great help. And I was directed to this amazing site, Worcester Medical Museums, an absolutely wonderful site with so much on it, which I couldn't possibly share with you in just this short period of time today. I'm focusing on the Powick Hospital Patient section and the website address for that is medicalmuseum.org.uk forward slash Powick dash patients. I'm taken to the first page, which gives a bit of information about the Powick Hospital between 1852 and 1916. And if you scroll down that page, you get to the search the database. Note this is an ongoing uh, research project, so some of the information isn't there. And the physical documents still reside at the Worcestershire Archive and Archaeology Service. So I'm able to click and search the database to find out about Abraham. And here you can see the search uh, page and you can see the information I put. I didn't put much, I just put Fletcher Abraham. I came up with a load of wonderful information. It's clear this is my Abraham Fletcher based on the fact that he's from the Dudley Work Union and his age and his type of job. I noticed there were pictures that I could click on. Clicking on these took me to the actual document and it was online and I could read it. This was amazing. So I'd like to share with you some of the information I found out about Abraham Fletcher when he was admitted on May 1884, aged just 17. He was diagnosed with epilepsy with dementia. He'd had epilepsy for 18 months, which was gradually getting worse. He is dangerous to others, threatens to kill his mother and sister, thinks the world is at an end as he heard the band play and the trumpet sound. He thinks the moon might drop from the sky. When he entered Powick Hospital on the 15th of May 1884, he was described as thin in person with acne on back, his thoracic and abdominal organs apparently healthy. Mentally he's suffering from dementia being dull, stupid, weak-minded, having but little power of intelligent thought or expression. On the 20th of May 1884, he says that a man covered in flames comes to talk to him every night. In the day, he is complaining of water flying all over his body and he can hear it rattling in his throat. By August of that same year, the fits are continuing and they leave him stupid and confused. But... He plays cricket well. I like that background information. I'd imagined that he was confined 
in maybe a room or rooms with others. It seems there is outdoor activity and some kind of sport being offered. Perhaps this is going to be good for Abraham. By the 22nd of October 1884, he's going on fairly well. He's not having bad fits since the last notes and he's going to work on the land. They don't really give much mention of the type of medical intervention he's receiving, but there seems to be lots of information about the physical needs that are being met. Interestingly, however, on the 21st of December 1884, he's relieved to Rubri Asylum. So he's been moved on to Rubri Asylum. And from that time, for a very short period of time, I lose notes a bit about him online. On the 22nd of July 1885, he returns from Rubri Asylum. And this seems to have been a detrimental move. He's mentally suffering from mania, being very excited, noisy and rambling in conversation. He constantly gesticulates and shouts, believes he's Abraham who killed Christ. He is very dangerous. We jump then to the 12th of May 1886. He's very demented and talks in a wild, incoherent way. Says he saw the devil today and I am in league with his satanic majesty. By the 29th of December 1887, he's reported to be pious and addicted to spiritual language, but frequently becomes abusive. His fits are frequent and he cannot be trusted to work outside. The notes that I found between 1888 and 1891 report little or no change. He has now been in a mental institution for seven years. On the 18th of June 1891, he's transferred to Agbergaveni Asylum. After his move from Powick to Abergaveni, I lose online documentation for him. However, I find him again in the 1901 census at Powick, back at the Worcester Lunatic Asylum. Even though they're only using the initials AF, I'm pretty sure it's my Abraham Fletcher. The age, the job and the place of birth are all correct. And other indexes seem to indicate that he moved at some point from 1893 back to Powick. Then I was able to see on the Medical Museum site the last bit of patient info available. There's a discharge date of the 13th of August 1902, but it quickly becomes clear that Abraham has died at Powick at a relatively young age. I'll never know what happened to him unless, of course, I buy the death certificate. And of course, that might just be something that I have to get to find and find the rest of his story. And that's exactly what this site is trying to do. They're trying to find out the stories of these people that were in and out of the asylum. Some people recovered, some moved from one asylum to another and back. Some stayed in Powick for most or for the rest of their lives until death. Here are just a few of the people whose documentation has gone beyond the asylum records to marriage certificates, to places in the census. I've just shown you a few here, but there's more on this page. Perhaps you'll find someone in this documentation and you'll be able to build upon their story and pass it on to the Worcesters Medical Museum to give those people more of a rounded life. Thank you so much for listening to my short extract about a personal journey into the online asylum records. It's been great to share it with you. Thank you very much.